Hallelujah, give him a, a new anointing, Lord Jesus. A fresh anointing, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift him up. Raise him up, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That he can be a testimony for the nations. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. Thank you for our senior pastor, Pastor Phil Green, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Use him in a mighty way, Lord. Hallelujah. Deliver the message that we need to hear. Oh, glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And for sure, for sure, for sure, we're going to give you the glory. Glory. We're going to give you the honor. We're going to give you, hallelujah, the praise because everything belongs to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. I say he deserves it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray you Lord have you way this morning Lord have you way this morning Lord Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we belong to you Lord we belong to you Lord we belong to you Lord hallelujah thank you so much Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church say, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You may see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Today's a good day. Today's a good day. Huh? Today's a good day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Alfredo, today's a good day. Delivered. Healed. You. The doctor before said it's cancer. Now God says no. Delivered. Healed. Set free. Hallelujah. Don't know why, but he did it. Huh? Glory to God. In a prayer meeting Monday night, prayer request came up. Some young lady, um, I forgot what it was, Sister Yarnell, you remember what it was. But we declared, hallelujah, healing, deliverance, and we exercised our right with the authority of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, it's not in my name, all right, so don't give any, don't look at us. Huh? We, we just declared the name of Jesus and used the authority of the name of Jesus. Came to work the next day and said the girl went on back home. Everything's good. She's back. The yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the baby right here. Okay, Vine, Alexis, why don't you come on up? Come on up. Give them a hand they come up. So um, I enjoy this time so much because even though we, we call it a, a baby dedication, in reality, it's this family dedication because this young man is going to know Jesus as he sees Jesus in you, right? And so as, as, as we dedicate him unto the Lord. Oh, what a good looking young man he is. Huh? Oh my goodness. You looking good, man. Uh, uh, you looking good. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you um, for giving us this honor. Not just me, but this church family, this honor. 
to, to do this, to pray over your son and to pray over you. Um, Jesus, too, was taken to the temple and dedicated. And so we're going to dedicate this young man to the Lord, that he would know the Lord at a very early age, that he would live for him, that he would be this great, team, great mighty man of God for the Lord. He's going to see it displayed at home. If you don't do it at home, it's going to be hard for him to see it. So it's imperative that you too, as dad and mom, live this godly life in front of him. Yes, you gave birth to him, but he belongs to the Lord. And God, in his infinite wisdom, has selected you to be the managers of his life for these next 18, 20 years he grows into a man. What a huge responsibility that is. But God saw that you were ready for it. And I believe God's anointing and grace is going to rest upon you and give you the spiritual wisdom and understanding and discernment to manage him the way God wants him to be managed. Are you ready for that? Do you want anyone else to join you up here? <laughs> Who do you want to join you up here? All right. Pastor David, come here. Stand behind the mom and the dad. And I've, I've got this certificate that I'm going to give you when we're done. And it's just a certificate of dedication that I'd like you to maybe even frame that when he gets older, he'll look on that wall and says, I will dedicate it to the Lord on this day. All right? And so, church family, won't you stand with me if you can? Hallelujah. You want someone to come up and talk to someone else? Yeah, come on, come on, sweetheart. This is Tony's daughter right here. Oh, wow. Look at you. Let us go before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this moment in time that we get to, as a family, dedicate this young man unto you. But God, not just him, but mom and dad. And not just mom and dad, but aunties, uncles, siblings, cousins, grandparents, that this whole family unit we dedicate and, and bring to you we pray, God, that you would live your life out in front of them. Hallelujah. Yes. This is Kevon Jr., right? Kevon Jr.? That Kevon Jr. would never be confused as to what it means to be a follower of Christ because he would see it in his parents, his grandparents, his aunties, and uncles, and cousins great-grandparents, God, that they would, he would see it in them, and he would say, oh, that's what it means to be a follower of Christ, because I saw it in mom and dad. And so I pray, God, that you would give this family unit, yes, wisdom, discernment, and understanding how to raise this young man in the admonition, hallelujah, and then in the, in the presence of you, oh God. God, they can't do it without you. You're going to need to help them. And Father, your word said today that if we pray to you, you would listen. Yes, Father, you have thoughts for this young man. Not to hurt or to harm him, but to give him a hope and a future. 
and we come against every plot of the enemy that would try to even bring harm to this young man. We curse it in the name of Jesus, and we call the angelic host to surround him and his family. Yes, let no evil befall him. Allow him to dwell in your presence all the days of his life. Oh, God, is our prayer. Mm. And God, as we look back 10, 15 years, we'll, we'll see this man on fire <laughs> for the Lord Jesus. Telling folks about you, God. God, that he would remember that on this day, God, he looked at the certificates. I was dedicated. I belong to the Lord, not to the world. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we give you thanks, we give you honor, and we give you glory. And in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. Give God a praise in this house, everyone. This is for you. Thank you so much. Sister Yarnell, I'm not sure. Is this the ribbon I'm cutting t today? Okay. So after we're done, you have this, this, this groundbreaking somewhere. Did you guys drive by? Huh? We, we had dust flying yesterday. And, and so um, uh, when, we're, when we're done, we'll all, we'll, me and Sister Ola, we're going to walk out there with double doors and down this sidewalk and, and, and get positioned. You guys are going to follow us and, and we're going to uh, have this prayer of dedication and groundbreaking. And, and um, as you guys were singing, um, don't know how, I was saying, yeah, Lord, I don't know how we're going to do it. <laughs> but he can. That's right. And, and so my wife and my son were encouraging me last night. They were, how you feel, Dad? I said, well, I'm, I'm excited, nervous, and scared all at the same time, man. And they were just, they, they, they were preaching to me. I said, believe God. Believe God. I said, all right, I'm going to believe God that God's going to do it. And, and so I, I thank you for joining me here um, today. Um, thank you for those who worked at Dignity Day yesterday. Um, and you, you changed the lives because you provided a hot shower for, for men and women who don't have access to it. They, they live in cars and underneath freeways and, and tents. Um, and, and you changed their life yesterday. And, and, and the Lord will honor you be, because you did that. The Lord said, when you do it to the very least of these, you, you did it unto me. And, and so you, you guys did it. And Sister Ola and I, we really appreciate your help and your sacrifice to come out on a Saturday um, and, and do that. Pastor David, thank you for leading that yesterday. And so, yeah, we, we're grateful. Um, are you glad that you're here today? I'm, I'm glad. I... Uh, it was hard getting up this morning. My oldest daughter took us to this restaurant last night, and I've never been to this type of restaurant before where they just serve you in course, course, course. And it was like a four-hour event. When they said four hours, four hours? At the, where the food was good, but around the third hour, I was just saying to myself, please let me go home. I'm tired. I want to go home. I'm full. I'm tired. And so I, I'm, I'm not saying the sermon's going to be short today, but I'm, 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 I'm pushing my way through today. Turn with me to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and we're going to uh, make a few comments, uh, read a few passages of Scripture, Romans chapter 4, and 
it, it's, it's been a wonderful walk uh, through the book of Romans uh, thus far, and I'm looking forward to walking with you through the remaining uh, chapters, Romans chapter 4. You know, in chapter 1, uh, the Apostle Paul was identifying uh, sin in the lives of men and women and how God says, okay, if you want to continue to do that, I'll let you go ahead and do it. But the, but the end is not going to end up well for you. Um, last week we discussed about the advantage of being a Jew. We kind of made a play on that and said, what, the, what is the advantage of, of being raised in the church? And, and I want to say to you, it is an advantage because what happens is you expose your child to the word of God. We're not saying that every child is going to grow up perfect and not have any bumps or falls. But what we're saying is when they come to themselves, they'll know how to get back to the Lord. Okay? I, I'm not foolish to think that everyone just lives a safe life from birth. But what I'm saying is when you raise children up you, in the church, you give them this advantage that other kids do not have because they know about the oracles of God, right? So in my teenage years, I did not live saved, right? But at the age of 19, I came to myself, and I knew where to go because of my upbringing. And so that's the advantage Paul was trying to declare about being a Jew and the advantage I was trying to declare about raising children up in the church because you give them that advantage of knowing how to get back to the Lord. And when we do not do that, we do our children a disservice. It's like schools are available, but my kid not going to go to school. You would not do that because you want your kid to have every advantage. Amen? And so now we move into Romans chapter 4. We, we're going to look at Abraham, who was the father of faith. And, and how was he, was he justified? Was he justified through works? Was he justified through a belief? And so, again, Romans chapter 4. And we're going to look at, start at verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. Everyone say believe. Believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham, the father of the Jewish nation and the father of faith. The word of God tells us that Abraham believed God. This believed God is, is commit one's trust to, uh, to place a confidence in. I'll often give this example. When you came in today and you found a chair, you sat down. What you did, you demonstrated faith because you placed confidence and trust in that chair that it had the ability to carry your weight. <laughs> you, 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 you did not uh, pull out your uh, uh, geometry or algebra uh, calculations and try to figure out the size of the chair, the height from the floor, will it be able to hold me? You, you, all you did, how many here just saw the chair and sat down? You don't know who made that chair, right? You don't know whether the screw was missing, right? You just found the chair and sat down. That's faith. I've never seen God, but I'm just going to sit on him. I, I've never measured God. I, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to believe God. And, and so it says here that uh, believe God, he, one who commits their trust or place a confidence in him to, to place my weight on. That this is a different belief than just I believe there is a God. I believe 
that there is a higher power. It's, it's more than that. As I said before, at the age of 19, uh, well, before the age of 19, I will give me, a, give me that mic there. All right, we're ready now. So before the age of 19, I believed in God, yet I never put my confidence in him or placed the weight of my life on him. Uh, James chapter 2, 19 tells us that the demons believe also. Right? So it's not, it's not just I believe, it's, it's putting my confidence, my trust, my full weight on him. And, and let me stop right here and make this point that I believe the Lord gave me when I was writing this about mankind and demons. Uh, mankind has sinned and the devil and demons have sinned. Yet the devil and demons are ineligible for redemption. When, when I was thinking about this, I was saying, man, both sinned, both created creatures sinned. Yet the devil and demons are ineligible for redemption while we as mankind are we have the privilege of being eligible for eternal life while the demons do not i i need you to grasp and to hold on to that idea of the privilege that mankind has if you wonder what are some of the reasons why the devil hates you? Number one, you're created in God's image. Number two, you are eligible to spend eternity in a place he's uneligible to go to. You see, the sins of demons were not paid for on the cross. Only mankind's sins were paid for. We, we have this favor that the devil cannot have. And, and, and if we were to speak into normal terms and we were seven years of age, we would say, if we were the devil, that's not fair. But let me say this to you, favor ain't fair. But it's on me. It's on us. Favor of God, it's on us. Hmm? We have this privilege that the enemies do not have, right? Favor isn't fair, but it's on us. Even the unsaved have the favor of God because no matter your position as a humankind, you have the opportunity for eternal life. Because your sins have been paid for on the cross. Now, you may not access that privilege, that benefit, but it's there for you. Amen. And when I think about that, I think about uh, D David said this. He, he said this. He said, what is man? And in fact, go with me to Psalm chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. Let me hold my point here. Psalms chapter 8. Um, and verse, verses um, 4 and 5. And, and David wrote this, Psalms chapter 8, verses 4 and 5. He said, what is man that you are mindful of him? 
in our terms, we would say, what is it about man? What is it about David, James, Alfred? What is it about them that you are so mindful of them? And the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. There's something about us as mankind that God cares so much about. He sent his only son to pay for our sins. While the enemy's sins remain on him. And we have the opportunity to live in a place that's prepared for us. And it is the enemy's um, scheme, mindset, to trick you into staying in a place for eternity that was actually reserved for him and his demons. Let me say it again. I don't think you're getting it. Hell was not designed for mankind. You have no business going there. You have no business going there. You have this very moment, according to the scripture, Jesus is preparing a place for you. Okay, I don't think you get that. I don't know how many of you if, you, if you bought, like, I don't know, like a new, brand new home. You know, they just, they just built, right? And, and, and so often, you would drive by that place, and you even take walks through it, right? And you, and you just imagine, right, and put this here and, and put this there. And you were excited because they are preparing a place for you. Now watch this. You're excited for that place, and you still got to pay a mortgage. <laughs> Amen? So if there's a place being prepared for you with no mortgage, you ought to shout. Amen? Huge kitchen. Big backyard. Gazebo. Fans, TV in the backyard, everything for you for free. Everyone say free. free. You know you like free. Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's preparing a place for us. Now it says, verse 4, um, well, verse 3, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Righteousness did not come from works. It simply came from belief in God. This belief is I'm putting my full weight on him. My whole life. My, my present, my future is on him. I believe God, and because I believe God, it's, he's going to account that belief as righteousness. For those who have this accounting background, you understand this statement. For those of you who do not, let me kind of explain it to you. You, have, you. you parents, you have a kid, and your kid is in college, and kid texts you or calls you and say, Mom, Dad, I'm broke. <laughs> Anybody can witness to that? I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm broke. Vernon, I know you, 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 you know that I'm, I'm broke. And so what you do is you go online or you go to the bank and you transfer money from your account into your child's account, right? The bank then looks at that and sees the money in your kid's account and then recognizes it as the kid's money, even though it came from mom and dad. Huh? The kid did not have to work for it. 
He did not have to get up at 5 a.m. and fight through traffic for it. All the kid had to do was to recognize that I'm broke, call mom and dad, let them know, and mom and dad makes this transfer into their account. What the Bible is saying here is we recognize we're broke. We're in sin. We're lost. We messed up. We call our father and say, Father, I admit I'm broke. I cannot save myself. I cannot pay my own bills. This huge debt of sin, I cannot pay. I'm broke. Can you help? When you do that, what the father does is transfers righteousness from his account, hallelujah, based on what Christ did into your account. And so when the father looks at you, he sees you as being righteous. You ain't did no good works. All you did is admit I'm broke. I need a savior. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so he accounted it. Let me go back. Uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. I mean, God is never going to be in debt to anyone. The Bible says this, um, the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God, so if, if you break that down, what the Bible is saying is this, you can either receive a gift, which you don't have to work for, that gives you eternal life, or you can work yourself to go to hell. Let, 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 I can, you can either stay in bed and relax every day and watch TV and go to heaven. Uh, you can get up every morning at 5, fight through the traffic, and work yourself to hell. Which one are you going to choose? I'm laying in the bed. Amen. Watching the TV. This, this is how it works right here. You work to go to hell. But the gift of God, hallelujah, through grace, you get eternal life. This is the message that we have to share with the unshaved world. Because they are trying to, in many cases, trying to work their way into heaven. See, if I do enough good works, you know, if, if I... If I, if I you know, I go to church at least once every two weeks. Um, <laughs> if, if, if I give an offering, you know, I, I, I treat people right. If I think if I do all those things, when God puts it on the scale, I'm probably going to come out pretty good. Certainly, I'll come out better than Donita. <laughs> I'll come out better, than, you know, certainly, because I do way more good works than she does. And so God's going to look at me and said, of course, you can come in because of all of your good works. I want you. It doesn't work that way. Because it's not by works. It's by his grace. And, and your, your decision to believe in the finished work of Christ that was done on the cross. All right. And so, so verse 5, but to him who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith, here it is again, is accounted for righteousness, all right? It states that we have not earned righteousness, we just believed God, and righteousness was put into our account. We just believed God. God said that we confess with our mouth, Right? And believe in our heart, right? The Bible declares that when Jesus was on the cross, one of the last few words he said was, it is finished. I've done it. I paid the price for all of man's sins. I'm talking about all of man's sins. I'm talking about the sin you did when you were a kid. I'm talking about the, the sin that you presently in right now. I'm talking about the sin that you may do in the future. The Bible says that Jesus paid for it all. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, so, so God, 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 God accounts that to our account as righteousness. Uh, Chuck Smith said this, uh, God blesses us on the basis of his grace, not on the basis of our faithfulness. If God were to base his blessing on us by our faithfulness, none of us here today would be blessed. Aren't you glad that he bases his, his faith blessing based on his grace? God is saying, I'm, I'm just good, and I just love you. I know you don't deserve it. I, I know I hear the devil saying, you know, James, God, you know, but God said, but I love James. I'm going to bless James, not based on what James is doing. Just based on my love for James, I'm going to do it. Have you ever blessed your child when they were wrong? You know you have. You fed them. <laughs> Amen. You let them stay in their room. Amen. Watch the TV. Amen. You blessed them even when they were wrong. How much more our Heavenly Father will for his children? But there's only one way to become a child of God. And that's through the accepting of the Lord Jesus as one's personal Savior. Let me say this again. I want to be clear. Every creation, every person is a creation of God. But only those who are born again are a child of God. Now, people may walk around the world and say, I'm a child of God. If you've accepted Jesus, that statement is true. If you've not accepted Jesus, that statement is false. You're not a child of God. You're a creation of God, but not a child of God. Hallelujah. Um, God looks at us as righteous because we earned it? No. Because we believed in the finished work of what Christ did on the cross. Um, as God declares me to be righteous, the, the devil whispers in my mind. Uh, you know you ain't righteous. That is why I hold on to Jesus. I cannot stand in the presence of the Father on my own. You and I can't do enough good works to make ourselves right before God. There's no amount of good works you and I can do. What we must do is simply cry out, I'm broke. And I need a Savior. And the Bible says, Jesus, you, you are the Savior. So I'm just going to believe what the Bible says is true. And God says, when you, when you do that, I'm going to account it as righteousness. You see, God's, God, God puts righteousness into our account, something that we did not earn. Verse 6 says, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. This, this blessed here, it, it, it really means, uh, oh, how happy are they. So when you see this blessed, this word here, it means, oh, how happy are they. Oh, how, oh, how happy are they, hallelujah, are those, th those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. This forgiven in Greek means to conceal, to, to cover. Oh, how happy are they that my sins are concealed. I did them. I committed them but they're covered under the blood. Hallelujah. Look over your life. Look over the sinful acts. Oh, how happy are they whose sins are covered. I did them, but they're covered under the blood of Jesus. 
That's if you belong to God. Why are they covered? Because we have accepted and believed the finished work of what Christ did on the cross. Verse 8, and we're going to get ready to wrap it up. Blessed is the man. Now, this is going to be a somewhat controversial verse. Blessed, oh, happy are they to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Now, then watch this. Talking about those who are born again. To those who God does not put sin on their account. This is a great position to be in where God is no longer imputing or accounting sin to your account. Because I have given my life over to Jesus. Now, now, now watch this, and Paul's going to explain it later on in Romans chapter 6. Because when you hear this verse, the worldliness in some people will say, well, if that's true, if, if, if God no longer imputes sin to my account, I'm just going to keep on sinning. But if you, if you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 1, Paul, Paul you know, gets into this, okay? Um, in fact, we might have to read it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? If, you, if there's an attitude that, well, if he's not going to impute sin to my account, I'll keep sinning. If that is your attitude, you've not been born again. If that is your attitude... You've not been born again. Because the attitude of the believer is, all that God has done for me, I'm going to cling on to Jesus. You mean he didn't cover all of my sins? Every one of my sins is covered? Man, I'm going to cling on to Jesus. My, my mindset is, is not, oh, I'll just continue in sin that grace me abound. No, 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 no. I'm leaving sin. Amen? I'm, I'm going to cling on to Jesus. All that he's done for me, glory to God. Do you know like a, just a regular person that's done a lot for you? I don't know. Mom, dad? No? Okay. At, at some point in time in a child's life, as you mature, you just stop giving mom and dad a whole bunch of trouble. Amen? And you just, you just cling on to them, right? At some point in time in your Christian, you just, I, I don't want to sin anymore. There are times when I may stumble, but I don't want to, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Amen? And, and because I'm clinging on to Jesus. Because my life has been changed because I believed God and what he has done is he has accounted unto my account righteous. I am now righteous. And that's why I'm able to stand firmly in the presence of the Father, fully redeemed because I am righteous. Not that I've earned it. I just believed God. Let's stand to our feet, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought I preached better than that, but that's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He has uh, imputed to your account righteousness because you simply believed in the finished work of what Jesus did on the cross. And he transferred that righteousness that Jesus earned into your account. 
until when God looks at you with all of your mistakes, with all of your different handicaps and, you know, being, you know, being how, how you are. Because we are. Amen. We are. We, we, we're, we're a handful. But God looks at us and says, but you're righteous. And you're mine. Hallelujah. I, I know sometimes sons and daughters drive their parents crazy. But mom and dad still say, but she's mine. Huh? But he's mine. And let me say, as you raise kids, and you may have experienced it already, there are going to be some time you're there, hoo, 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 hoo. but they're yours. And no matter what they do, they're still yours. Hallelujah. If you've not accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I, I, I want to give you this chance right now to accept him. It's, it's so easy. He's done all the work. And he's willing to share his righteousness with you, even though you didn't earn it. Do not let the enemy fool you into thinking you have to stop X and Y first before you come. You come, and then the Spirit of the Lord then gives you the strength to stop X and and Y and Z. Amen? Don't be fooled. The enemy would tell you you got to clean up first. No, you don't. You got to come first. So every eye closed just for a moment. And every head bowed. If you're here today um, and, you, and you sense God, and only if you sense God, if you sense God, pulling on your heart and, and, and telling you he wants to share his righteousness with you um, and to set you free from the power of sin. I want to ask you to, to right now just simply raise your hand if you're here today. And yes, yes, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Yes. So, Here's, here's what we want to do. What we want to do. It's going to take great courage. It's going to take great. But I want you to just join me here. If you can do that. If you can just, I'll come down. If you have your hand raised, and you can just come here and just join me here at this altar. For those who who say I want, I want to. You, 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 my young sister. Come here, my sister. Come here. Someone walk with them. This is your this is your friend that you just met, isn't it? Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You you met her at the coffee store? Where? The dollar store. Oh, I'm, I'm telling your business, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm telling all your business at the dollar store. That's all right. I got family members that shop at the dollar store too. So don't don't worry. Me, I shop there too. Hallelujah. You got to save a dollar. <laughs> Today's your day. So we're going to believe God for you today. And just simply say, say, Father, I accept the work that Christ did on the cross. Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. And today, I'm a new creature. Amen. Give God praise in this house, everyone. Hallelujah. So, She's going to be yours, the disciple. <laughs> Amen. So if she grows, I know you're doing a good job. If she don't grow, I know you're not doing a great job. So it's, it's on you in Jesus' name. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to, in fact, we're going to pray out there. 
okay? We're going to uh, walk out these double doors, right? Um, and then uh, we're going to go down the steps, down the sidewalk, right? And we're going to, now ladies, be careful with your heels and stuff because it's dirt out there now, okay? So be careful. Um, and then we're going to set the mic up and, 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 and do this dedication. Okay, are, are we ready? All right, where's Sister Ola at? Okay, Sister Ola, okay. So come get this mic, Pastor David.